Today, I will show you something that will change the world in a very fundamental way forever. So please pay close attention and enjoy this video. Now, I have studied data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence in an academic setting for many years at Pace University and Monmouth University. I have written software that uses machine learning to predict Bitcoin prices, as you can see here. I have programmed humanoid robots to perform various tasks, just like this. But this is absolutely on a completely different level. Recently, a company called OpenAI, which was founded by Sam Altman and Elon Musk, and funded in part by Microsoft, created a framework called ChatGPT, which stands for Chat Generative Pre-trained Transformer. This framework with its chat interface is able to do the unthinkable. Yes, you heard it here first. This application, in my opinion, and the opinion of just about anyone who interacts with it, can pass the Alan Turing test. Yes, that's right. The Alan Turing test, originally called the imitation game by Alan Turing in 1950, is a test of a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to or indistinguishable from that of a human. Basically, ChatGPT can do things in such a way that it is indistinguishable from what a real person would do. In the spirit of this channel, I have this robot write a poem about a Mac Pro, which is a computer that I have made a video series about recently. And this thing goes out and just creates a poem. Uh, it sounds like a piece of art written by a person. So without further ado, let's check it out and let's see some other things that this incredible artificial intelligence code can do. I personally have prepared a developer account for this specific video and I'm just going to show you exactly how this works and, and what to do. Uh, as far as for yourself, if you want to try this at home, you can absolutely do so. This is an open platform. Just go to chat.openai.com and if the servers are available, which they are bogged down majority of the time right now because so many people all over the world are realizing that this exists and so they're logging on. But if you go to it, uh, chat.openai.com uh, and sign up for it, you might get access to be able to play around with this thing and have some fun. But without further ado, I have my developer mode here, developer account. Let me just show you exactly what this looks like. All right guys, so I'm super excited about this because this is gonna write a poem about a Mac Pro model A1481. I just did a video series on how to upgrade that memory uh, and how to upgrade the SSD on it. And uh, let's see what kind of poem this thing can come up with. So let's go with, uh, please write a poem for Mac Pro. A1481. All right, let's see what it does. <laughs> Mac Pro A1481, sleek and silver too. With power that's a match, it'll see you through. From video editing to coding galore, this machine will make your work, make your work so much more. With its Intel processor so fast and strong, you'll be able to work on multiple tasks all day long. With its ECC memory, your data will be secure, and with its graphics card, your visuals will be pure. <laughs> Mac Pro 1481, a true workhorse. It'll be, uh, it'll be. Your productivity will soar so easily. So take a bow and give it a clap for this machine is built to last. <laughs> All right, that's a good one. Um, okay, well, I mean, it's uh, as funny as it is. Let's see if we can get some more practical use out of this. And I'm here like trying to get you guys to uh, really understand the scope uh, of uh, something like this, like a, a possible beginnings 
of the front end uh, or the front lobe of a sentient, sentient machine. Okay, let's have a little bit more fun. Uh, Ray, a joke about Mac books. <clears throat> Why did the MacBook go to the doctor? Because it had a retina display problem. <laughs> okay, let's not stop there. Let's just keep going. Right? Another MacBook joke. Why did the MacBook Air go to the gym? to get some more air in its thin frame. Lane, try another. Give me another MacBook joke. But a good one this time. <laughs> Why was the MacBook feeling cold? Because it left its windows open. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, this is too good. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so, I mean, you can see how uh, fun this is. And, uh, you know, if you wanted to do something even better, like let's say you had a website in mind and let's say, you know, like I personally have another business outside of this YouTube channel. You know, I have itechnologyllc.com. So if I were just to say that, uh, uh, Right and about page for itechnologyllc.com. Uh, this thing is going to go out and basically write a incredible, uh, incredible <laughs> uh, description that I could just copy and paste into the about of my page, and it sounds professional. Look at this. Welcome to iTechnology LXC, where the, we are the leading provider of technology solutions for businesses and individuals. Our teams of experts have passion for all things tech, blah, blah, blah. I mean, this sounds like a professional robot. Uh, it's incredible. You know, um, you know this. So just to finish this demonstration, and if you're not completely convinced or you don't understand what this is, okay, um, this thing, uh, can go out and interpret data and give you a response like a human would and it is capable of giving you an answer to just about anything and let me just show you how freaking scary and crazy things are about to get when everyone in the world starts figuring out that technology like this exists and what it is capable of. Write a paper on cybersecurity. How about that? You know, if uh, you're in school and you're looking to uh, write a paper that is unique content and it is not a copy or plagiarization of anything, let's take a look. Well, what do we have here? Cybersecurity is a crucial issue issue that affects individuals, businesses, government, organizations alike, with an increasing reliance on technology in all aspects of life, the need for effective cybersecurity, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is unique content. You can submit this to a plagiarization checker and it is going to come up clean because this is uh, unique content. Um, unfortunately, uh, if you don't realize how scary this is when you're seeing this type out and kind of explain to you, um, you know, I just, I'm not sure if, if, if you don't get it, you just don't get it. But if you do get it, okay, I think that a light might be going off in your head and you might be thinking, well, you know, what, how does this work? And what can I do uh, to, uh, well, for, what can I do to uh, help me understand this more or uh, really dive into it? And uh, this is kind of why I prepared this video. So let me just uh, 
Let me just explain to you exactly how this works. But before I go into the details of ChatGPT, I want to recommend this book on artificial intelligence and machine learning, which explains the methods that are used in all artificial intelligence works in the field today. You can find the link in the description. I have read it myself and I reference it all the time in academia. Another quick thing before we get into it, I would like to give a big shout out to Professor Demis and Dr. Wolf from Pace University, who first introduced me to AI and my professors and colleagues at Monmouth University. I want to say a special thank you to the Head of Graduate Studies, Dr. Wong, who mentored me through my studies, uh, and uh, my first AI class professor, uh, Dr. Sherl, uh, and my academic advisor. Uh, big thank you. And also a big thank you uh, to Dr. Gao for inviting me to his research team. To explain the intricacies of ChatGPT and how it works, I'd like to uh, use an article from assemblyai.com. Please see it in the description below. So let's dive right in. ChatGPT is the latest language model from OpenAI and represents a significant improvement over its predecessor, which was called GPT-3. Similarly to many large language models, ChatGPT is capable of generating texts in a wide range of styles and for different purposes, but with remarkably greater precision, detail, and coherence. It represents the next generation in OpenAI's line of large language models, and it is designed with a strong focus on interactive conversation. The creators have used a combination of both supervised learning and reinforcement learning to fine-tune ChatGPT. But it is reinforcement learning component specifically that makes ChatGPT unique. The creators use a particular technique called reinforcement learning from human feedback, RLHF, which uses human feedback in the training loop to minimize harmful, untruthful, and or biased outputs. We're going to examine first the GPT-3's limitations that were used in the making of ChatGPT and how they stem from its training process before learning how RLHF works and understand how ChatGPT uses RLHF to overcome these issues. We will conclude by looking at some of the limitations of this methodology. In the context of machine learning, the term capability refers to a model's ability to perform a specific task or a set of tasks. A model's capability is typically evaluated by how, by how well it is able to optimize its objective function, the mathematical expression that determines the goal of the model. For example, a model designed to predict stock market prices may have an objective function that measures the accuracy of the model's predictions. If the model is able to accurately predict the movement of the stock price over time, it would be considered to have a high level of capability for this task. Alignment, on the other hand, is concerned with what we actually want the model to do versus what it is being trained to do. It asks the question, is that objective function consistent with our intentions? And refers to the extent to which the model's goals and behavior align with human values and expectations. For a simple concrete example, say we train a bird classifier to classify birds as either sparrows or robins, and we use log loss, which measures the difference between the predicted profitability distribution of the model and the true distribution as the training objective. Even though our ultimate goal is high classification accuracy, the model might have low log loss, uh, i.e. the model's capability is high, but poor accuracy on the test set. In fact, log loss is not perfectly correlated with accuracy in classification tasks. This is an example of misalignment, where the model is capable of optimizing the training objective, but poorly aligned with our ultimate goal. Models like the original GPT-3 are misaligned. 
Large language models such as GPT-3 are trained on vast amounts of text data from internet and are capable of generating human-like text, but they may not always produce outcome that is consistent with human expectations or desirable values. In fact, their objective function is a probability distribution over word sequences or token sequences that allows them to predict what the next word is in a, se in, in a sequence. In a particular application, however, these models are intended to perform some form of valuable cognitive work, and there is a clear divergence between the way these models are trained and the way we'd like to use them. Even though a machine calculated statistical distribution of word sequence might be, mathematically speaking, a very effective choice for our model language, we as humans generate language by choosing text sequence that are best for the given situation, using our background knowledge and common sense to guide this process. This can be a problem when language models are used in applications that require a high degree of trust or reliability, such as dialogue systems or intelligent personal assistants. While these powerful, complex models trained on huge amounts of data have become extremely capable in the last few years, when used in production systems to make humans' lives easier, they often fall short of this potential. The alignment problem in large language models typically manifests as the following four. First, lack of helpfulness. Not following the user's explicit instructions. Second, hallucinations. Models making up unexisting or wrong facts. Third, lack of interpretability. It is difficult for humans to understand how the model arrived at a particular decision or prediction. And fourth, lastly, generating bias and toxic output. A language model that is trained on bias and toxic data might reproduce that in its output, even if it was not explicitly instructed to do so. But where does this alignment problem stem from concretely? Is it the very way language models are trained inherently prone to misalignment? Hmm. Researchers and developers are working on various approaches to address the alignment problem in a large language model. ChatGPT is based on the original GPT-3 model, but has been further trained by using human feedback to guide the learning process with the specific goal of mitigating the model's misalignment issues. The specific technique used called reinforcement learning from human feedback, uh, RLHF, is based on previous academic research. ChatGPT represents the first case of use of this technique for a model put into production. And uh, that's pretty impressive, right? But how exactly do creators of ChatGPT use human feedback to attack alignment problems? The difference in this reference learning from human feedback technique uh, and the method overall consists of three distinct steps. First, supervised fine-tuning step. A pre-trained language model is fine-tuned on a relatively small amount of demonstration data curated by labelers to learn a supervised policy, the SFT model, that generates outputs from a selected list of prompts. This represents the baseline of a model. Secondly, we mimic the human preferences step. Labelers are asked to vote on a relatively large number of SFT model outputs. This way, creating a new data set consists of comprising data. A new model is trained on this data set. This is referred to as the reward model, RM. Next, and thirdly, we have the proximal uh, policy optimization, PPO step. The reward model is used to further fine tune and improve the SFT model. The outcome of this step is the so-called policy model. Now, the step one takes place only once, while step two and three can be iterated continuously. 
more comparison data is collected on the current bias policy model, which is used to train the new reward model and then a new policy. Now let's look at the performance evaluation. Because the model is trained on human label, labeler's input, the core part of the evaluation is also based on human input, i.e. it takes place by having labelers rate the quality of the model outputs. To avoid outfitting to the judgment of the labelers involved in the trading phase, the test set uses prompts from the held out OpenAI customers which are not represented in the training data. The model is evaluated on three high-level criteria. First, helpfulness. Judging the model's ability to follow user instructions as well as infer instructions. Secondly, truthfulness. Judging the model's tendency for hallucinations, making things up, on closed domain tasks. The model is evaluated on the truthful QA dataset. Thirdly, har harmlessness. The labelers evaluate whether the model's output is appropriate, uh, whether it contains derogatory content. The model is also benchmarked on the real toxicity prompts and crowd S pairs datasets. The model is also evaluated for zero short performance on traditional L NLP tasks like question answering, reading comprehension, summarization on some of which of the developers observe performance regressions compared to GPT-3. This is an example of a alignment text where the RLHF based alignment procedure comes at the cost of lower performance in certain tasks. The performance regressions on these datasets can be greatly reduced with a trick called pre-trained mix. During training of the PPO model via gradient descent, the gradient updates are computed by mixing the gradients of the SFT model and the PPO model. Now let's highlight some shortcomings of the chat GPT methodology. A very clear limitation of the methodology as discussed in the Instruct GPT paper on which G Chat GPT is based on according to its creators is the fact that the process of aligning language models with human intentions, the data for fine-tuning the model is influenced by the intricate variety of subjective factors. These factors are the following. The preference of labelers who produce the demonstration data. The researchers who design the study and write the labeling instructions. The choice of prompts crafted by the developers and provided by the open AI customers. The labeler's bias uh, is both included in the reward model training by ranking outputs and in the model evaluation. In particular, the authors point out the obvious fact that the labelers and researchers taking part in the training process may not be representative of all potential end users of the language model. Now, this basically highlights all the drawbacks and overall, this video has explained the depth of the way that OpenAI chose to uh, create this um, chat GPT model on the GPT-3 framework with all of these additional um, technologies and artificial intelligence and machine learning methodologies. I hope you really enjoyed this video and if you like this type of information, please comment in the comment section below. You can write a suggestion for a new video or perhaps some way of making this video or a future video about ChatGPT better. Thank you for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Have a wonderful day.